There was a time not too long ago when India's acquisition of the Rafales was hailed as a game changer. It marked an end to India's dependence on Russian weapons and platforms. It was also seen as a chance to push back against Pakistan. But what if that edge is fading fast? What if Islamabad has something up its sleeve that can negate the Rafale's advantage? You're watching this channel. And today we will discuss a new report that talks about a deep dive into the next phase of South Asia's aerial arms race. Let's get into the details. First, let's look at the new arsenal being built by Pakistan. Number one, J-35A. This is a fifth-gen stealth jet being developed by China Zavik. Some reports say it's based on the Shenyang FC-31, which is a twin-gen stealth fighter. The J-35A could have a stealth profile similar to the F-35, and it could carry weapons inside its internal weapons bay. It also reportedly has an active electronically scanned array, or a ESA radar which is considered to be one of the most important technologies for modern fighters. An AESA radar can track multiple targets at once, and it can do so over a wide area. This makes it ideal for use in air superiority and strike roles. If Pakistan gets its hands on this fighter jet, then it could pose a serious challenge to India, because the aircraft's stealth capabilities could allow it to penetrate deep into Indian airspace undetected. This would allow Pakistan to strike at key targets, such as radar stations and air defense sites. This could effectively neutralize India's advantage in terms of radar and SAM, or surface-to-air missile coverage. As things stand, India's air defense network is quite robust. This gives India's air force the ability to control the airspace during a conflict. But if Pakistan starts operating stealth fighters, then this advantage would be neutralized. The question is, how long will it take? Well, Pakistan is hoping that it will be soon. According to reports, the Chengdu J-35 could enter service by 2025. That's three years from now. Number 2, HQ-19. This anti-ballistic missile system is comparable to THAAD or the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System. Both THAAD and HQ-19 are designed to intercept incoming missiles in the upper atmosphere. Now, this is important because most modern anti-ballistic missile systems are designed to intercept incoming missiles during their mid-course phase. But the HQ-19 is different. It's designed to intercept missiles during their terminal phase, which means that it can shoot them down much closer to the ground. This makes it ideal for use in situations where there is a high risk of friendly casualties. So why is this important for Pakistan? Because it gives Pakistan a second layer of missile defense. Currently, Pakistan operates the F-16, which are capable of carrying the small diameter bomb, also known as the SDB. This is a long-range missile with a top-over attack capability. It's designed to penetrate through a variety of air defense systems. But if Pakistan deploys the HQ-19, then it would have a defense against the SDB. In fact, it would have a defense against all Indian long-range missiles, including the Prithvi, the Agni variants, and so on. And number three, KJ-500. This is an Airborne Early Warning, or AEW, platform basically a flying radar that can provide early warning of incoming aircraft and missiles. The KJ-500 can detect Lorsiasa radar, cross-section threats such as cruise missiles and even stealth fighters like the Rofel. It's a force multiplier when combined with other platforms like the J-10C and the JF-17 Block III. Pakistan is expected to receive these aircraft in the near future. Now let's look at India's response. Does India still have the upper hand? Well, at the moment it does. India's Rafale jets are equipped with the Meteor long-range air-to-air missiles. These missiles give the Rafale a significant edge over Pakistani fighters. In addition to the Rafales, India also has the S-400, which is a highly effective SAM system. The S-400 can shoot down incoming aircraft and missiles. It's designed to intercept targets at a very high speed and at a range of up to 400 kilometers. So India's air defense network is well protected against any potential aerial threat from Pakistan. Moreover, India is upgrading its SU-30MKI fleet. When these upgrades are complete, the SU-30MKI will be among the most advanced and capable fighters in the world. They'll have the ability to carry long-range air-to-air missiles, air-to-ground missiles, laser-guided bombs, and even nuclear weapons. So does this mean that Pakistan's new acquisitions are irrelevant? Well, not exactly. Yes, 
Pakistan may not have the operational or the financial muscle to match India's military spending. Ow. But its intent is clear. The new arsenal reflects its intent to project power and deter India. Whether or not it succeeds in doing so remains to be seen. But one thing is for sure, the India-Pakistan rivalry is entering a new high-tech phase. A phase dominated by stealth fighters, long-range missiles, and advanced electronic warfare capabilities. The next five years will tell us a lot about this rivalry. We can expect to see more drones, more AI, and more space-based surveillance. And it's not just military hardware that will be important. The quality of training and the experience of pilots will also play a major role in determining the outcome of any engagement. But one thing is certain, the skies above South Asia are heating up. So did India's edge over Pakistan really just disappear? From Rafale to ruin, it's too early to say. But the balance of power in the region is definitely shifting. Air dominance is no longer about who flies faster, but who sees first, shoots first, and survives the digital battlefield. The next war, if it comes, may be decided before the first missile is even launched. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. And if you liked this video, don't forget to show your support. Thanks for watching Promptware. Like and subscribe.